Hey guys, Kevin the Toy Smuggler here, and today we're going to be talking about the New York Toy Fair 2020 retro figures. And one of the top guys working at is the Ghostbusters line. And obviously, you know, we had, you know, I don't have any yet, you know, but, you know, we're talking about the uh, retro Star Wars. So we're going to have a little discussion about that this morning. I got a few minutes uh, before I got to go to work. But real quick, if you, everyone don't mind, uh, if you've been to my Sexton Creations Facebook, you will notice that. Yes, I talked about the Hobby Lobby uh, painting classes. I'm going to do Adventures in Painting. I start in the last Saturday of April, and hopefully I'll be doing this two Saturdays a month for the rest of the year. That's that's my goal. I love painting, if you all don't know me. And that, that's something I'm going to start doing just a little bit more. I'm not, uh, I know everybody thinks, oh, I, I'm a sculptor. I just do toys. No, I, I, I'm actually a film director. I'm actually getting ready also to, in March, start teaching a movie making class at the local library here in Dalton. So, so I'm a filmmaker. Like I said, I do the toy stuff, obviously, but I'm a professional painter where I do like book covers, independent film, like the old Drew Struzan kind of style movie posters. So I do a little, do a lot, quite a bit of it things because a I get burned out really easy on just one thing. I get bored with it, ADHD. But I've used that as a way to. Uh, if I get burned out on something instead of quitting and not being creative at all, I just jump to a different medium. And it usually what I have found out a lot of people say, Kevin, you need to try to be a master of one thing. And, I, and as much as that sounds great. And at certain times in your career, I think you do need to concentrate on something a little bit more than others. But what I have learned in all the different art forms that I do that the filming and the designing toys, doing comic book art, doing the movie posters, all those different mediums, they work so well together. So, and even the story writing that I end up doing, they all feed each other. And like I said, and then when you end up, when I'm like working for a guy like Chris Smith down the road, uh, hey, you can also do card art and you're a sculptor too. So it's one-stop shopping. They can save money. It's just good for everybody. And it, and it, and, and sorry guys, if you're an artist, this is like I am. You all know if you hang your hat on one thing, like everything else, there's highs and there's lows. So that's why I do that. So, but back to our topic this morning, like I said, I got the notice on there. They, they're coming out, you know, my daughter, has fell in love in the last six months with the old retro Ghostbuster toys, the the cartoon, the new, the real Ghostbusters. She loves these toys, and like I said, uh, I, I I vaguely remember these as a kid and stuff like that. Because about the time these come out, uh, I was getting out of buying toys or collecting toys at that point. But anyway, I got to looking on, on at the uh, at the toy fair, and let's see, let me go ahead and flip over here so I can. Is that way if there's any kind of news on here uh, on the Ghostbusters part, since I'm already talking about Ghostbusters here, because the first thing they show, if you go to the New York Toy Fair thing, of course, Star Wars is the first thing everybody wants to talk about, which is fine. And I'm going to talk a little bit about Star Wars, too. Well, I'll tell you what, since all I'm seeing are here is Star Wars, we'll go ahead and start with Star Wars. And the, one of the first few things I'm seeing here right off the bat is the Boba Fett. Looks great and everything like that. And I think it uh, uh, was a great choice. Obviously, you got the Yoda, uh, Bespin Luke. Uh, looks a bit shiny. <laughs> but these toys aren't, I mean, they're just not going to be the same quality. We found out that really quick, like on the Stormtrooper and, and I think the Han Solo too. None of them can hold their weapons. Uh, but I have to say the detail on the Stormtrooper came out pretty sharp. Uh, uh, but it's still slightly uh, you you hold a Chris Smith Stormtrooper versus one of these. The Chris Smith versions are much more crisp. But for a figure that I am just going to be leaving in this package, I don't want it out. It is, it is sculpted good. And the, the, my purpose is I'll never want to spend fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars for original one on card. Just I, I if I was a millionaire, I probably wouldn't do it. So now would I purchase one for the museum? That's a whole different ball game. But on this deal, the only thing I think everybody complained about was the the little faux retro edging they put on there. I didn't care. I, I, I but I would agree. I don't care for it. I don't. I'm not against it. To me, it was a uh, once you had this big stupid sticker on there. Why did you even bother? <laughs> I mean, it was just kind of like a wasted effort there. And really, uh, 
I think these big stickers here, I get to the point because he's trying to put something on here so these obscene collectors here would, would not have a cow. But I honestly think if you would have went right here and done this same sticker, but the size of a quarter and put it in the corner, A, anybody trying to sell this on eBay for an original obviously would see the same red sticker right there and it wouldn't mess with the beautiful card art. And the card art's real nice. Unfortunately, the card isn't that great. So I am actually making better cards than this. So that's, that's sad. When an independent guy, you know, in his office can make a better card. So that, but Hasbro, what they did, they, they cut corners here. They cut corners. They do the cut corners, come out something, jumping off the nostalgia thing, and they're making a quick buck. Now they're, good. like I said, they're going to be coming out again with the, they're doing the exact same thing, the Ghostbusters. And I can tell right off the bat by looking at, <clears throat> excuse me, guys, my throat's crazy this morning. So, but right off the bat, looking like, you know, I got the Ray figure here. Just looking at the figures on the screen, I can tell that there's a major loss in detail. They're very, where the, the sculpting on these, were pretty, this was a great sculpts they did on this line. I didn't like the like some of the colored choices, but the, but looking at the cartoon and looking at the figure, these were greatly greatly sculpted. So and like I said, but the new ones they look very soft. Uh, but you know it'd be nice if you wanted some. Like I said, just to hang up on the wall, and they're, they're probably going to be around that ten dollar price point. And in the long run, they will be worth it. And just for that purpose, but uh, but but the another discussion I want people. If they, I know a lot of people are not going to be here live because I'm the only one that gets up this crazy early in the morning. Is do you honestly think by coming out with these retro style figures does it hurt the value of the original? And I and I understand both sides of the fence, but at the same time, and and I'm coming from this from an artist point of view, an original will always be an original. And bottom line, if someone comes off with a cheap knockoff, knock off, which someone always will and on every product there's ever made, whether you're talking about vintage toys or, say, Starbucks coffee, guess what? Uh, Burger King's coffee, which is a Seattle's best, and Starbucks is the exact same coffee. You can go to Burger King and get, I think, a tall, which is a small coffee. Uh, and it's like a dollar or something. You go to Starbucks, which is the exact same cup of coffee, but in a different cup. And you're going to pay nearly four bucks. So, and guess what? I have still not seen everybody quitting to go into Starbucks. They still line up to Starbucks because it's not about the coffee. It's about having that stupid damn cup. Oh, I'm drinking Starbucks, which I like it. But if that's the only choice I got, I'll go to Starbucks. But if I'm sitting right beside across the street, going to the convention and Burger King's right there and they don't have a huge line versus standing in the line for 45 minutes waiting for a damn cup of coffee. I'm going to Burger King. Okay. I'm just not that. I don't give a crap. I'm not drinking the cup of coffee to impress anybody. I just want the damn coffee. Hence why I got coffee right here, folks. It's a whole perception and image thing. It's pathetic. I, I, but it's, it's reality. So, and it's no different with the coffee versus vintage figures. And so the way I look at it is there, you're going to have a huge market of people that will buy these figures, the new retro versions of these versus and the, the Star Wars. It don't matter just because they're cheap and they can put them on the wall. And guess what? I get it. That's perfectly fine. But at the end of the day, for a real collector, the hardcore guys, because I know them. They won't buy those. They only want vintage. And guess what? That's fine too. So it's you're you're really the the, the like people like Hasbro and all them. They're catering to both sides of the market. And it's really not because sorry, sorry. If you would only buy the cheap ones and you would never buy them, you're not affecting the market anyway. All they have done is found a cheap way to satisfy the, a customer that you know would never buy something. So it don't hurt the vintage stuff. If anything, it just really ferments the value of these because you can look at them and tell a huge difference. So honestly, a loose one of these guys with good, as long as the paint's good, should and always be worth more than the new cheap ones coming out in the package. So whatever they're worth for, I say they're worth 10 bucks when they come out. 
same figure as long as you had all accessories should be worth a minimum of 20 bucks simple as that folks so and then like i said I, i'm look i see it from both sides from a market person from a business person and an artist that's where i'm coming from and like i said uh, going now we're going, going to go back here to star wars and do a quick run through we have the hoth leia the the han solo hoth so that, that's pretty cool but the one i'm most interested in is the new luke skywalker the uh, x-wing coming out that's something new that's neat uh and uh and what's your all's opinion on the snow, snow speeder uh looks amazing it comes with dac i 119 bucks and that's before tax uh i don't know about that so and, and i'm sure it's, it's a pretty it's probably pushing it's probably just slightly smaller than your vintage uh millennium falcon so but i still think that and the sad part is with that uh, 120 might as well say 120 dollar price point sad thing is people are going to buy them up and they're going to be knocking 150 200 dollars aftermarket that's the sad part and i see they're coming out here with the slave one again i never did get that and I, I thought it was always nice but same problem running that they came out with it boom they they's off the shelves really fast and no one got a chance to get in and i do want to make a point here i'm looking at the uh the new luke skywalker and he comes with a board game i have to agree with a lot of people i i wish they would do a little bit more this direction as far as kind of creating a new character that we've not had before but without forcing us to pay double the price because it's in a board game so i think hasbro if you if you i think listen to people and go this route because people are wanting it but you're pissing them off by putting them in a board game buy or you're forcing them to buy something they don't want to buy so so I, I think they need to make that slight change and then i think we got a win-win for everybody so to speak so and uh, here's a stupid mission fleet crap <coughs> and then we got the new uh imperial transport looks really cool uh i can't remember i think the price point on that i want to say is is, is over 50 dollars. i want to think but it looks really sweet i mean it looks like the it was designed very well and baby yoda crap baby yoda crap and more baby yoda crap they really run that product really quick so so another thing I uh, uh, kind of mentioned, you know, Toy Forever, and what I was wondering, uh, what other lines could be coming up in the next future since we're kind of seeing a trend going on with, uh, oh, we got some people. Hey, Tim. Sorry, bud. Didn't miss you. I got to, too busy talking and stuff. Good to see you, brother. Tim's always been coming on here, putting out great questions, great comments. Tim, I just want to say thank you for uh, your support the channel, buddy. Good to see you on here this morning. But I, I got a prediction here. Since we're talking about retro style figures, we got we see Star Wars doing it. Now we got the Ghostbusters line doing it. But I've been hearing rumor with the, the with the you know the, the He Man movie coming out uh, sometime next year, and I've been hearing rumors on the movie side of things that they're looking at doing a revamp of the '80s version of Flash Gordon, and and then I got the vintage toys love these vintage toys i wish i can find the uh the line guy thung and the uh i think it's the, the beast guy the blue guy it looks like a blue gorilla looking guy but i love these toys this was a, a line that i wish they really could expand it more on and what i would hope to see is i would love for them to come back out with if they decide to do another movie i wish they would touch on that old filmation cartoon and redo these and do all of them but then expand more with the uh the female characters that was in the tv show and stuff like that and some of the the smaller i think this line right here if they would do it right and do the movie stuff plus do this filmation cartoon stuff would be an excellent line to expand on i mean they can even come out with the old cartoon again and let that introduce into a new cartoon and just let it pick up like the he-man series is going to do considering that style of cartoon with he-man they're very similar in retrospects i think that would be a great line to come out about the same time was when the he-man stuff comes out let's see here tim saying see though the live action jetsons movie i've heard a little bit about that oh gilligan's island oh that's scary <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I've seen every Gilligan's Island as a kid, but I don't know about 
there's just some properties they were great during their time and i just i don't know if nowadays if that would work uh, yeah adele arden and prince Arden would be would be amazing in that line and i would like to see the movie the movie version and the filmation version also as well both of those lines i think would be just tough and like i said i think just the, the the ships and those little miniature places there's so many cool things like a like a could you imagine him with the with a different color uh sculpt but with a throne room i mean i, I mean it's and, and another thing they can do is go back to the 40s uh little miniature the the 20 minute serials and they can do figures off that as well brady bunch movie uh that's another one mm. There's it's it's fifty fifty go go either way, Beverly Hillbillies same thing. Uh, now the Smurfs we've had two different versions of Smurfs and I think both versions I think Sony did one I can't remember if Sony was a part of the the second one or not. I think one of them went straight to DVD. Uh, they got Doogie Howser the one that Doogie Howser was in and all those were great. But but here's the thing, Smurfs is one of those products that if you long as you write a simple story. That will always, that's a type of product that will always cater to the little kids versus the Brady Bunch and the Gilligan's Island. That's more for us older people. And that was a, like I said, a generational type product that came out. And I just don't know if that will translate over to a newer audience, so to speak, because I just don't see any new kids giving a flying fit about Gilligan's Island. I just don't see it. I mean, these, it's not high tech enough. So, let's see what else you got here? Uh, yes, the yeah, you bought the DVD set of the Flash Gordon called the Space Soldiers. Yeah, brilliant stuff. I mean, and some of the best story writing was on those, those serials and the filmation cart. The filmation really done a great job. It's just for what it's just funny how I think the Flash Gordon came out like a year or two before. I think, I think. It was 71 when the, the filmation did this. And other, not 70. Was it, was it that early? But anyway, there's a quite a bit. There's a little bit of a difference there between the Flash Gordon and the He-Man. And for some reason, like I said, this didn't go over as well. But when, by the time they got around done the He-Man, which only thing different was He-Man was more muscular. And they and that was about it. The rest of the, the cartoon was very, very close. And but it but timing's everything. You know, maybe the, the generation hadn't caught up to it yet. Just like when Planet of the Apes first came out is controversial and it didn't really do majorly huge success but 20 years later when mark Wahlberg got a part of it and you can do cg better boom it was a huge success but i still think the older movie is much better not getting nothing against old mark Wahlberg though he done great in the film let's see yep let's see 1979 thank you tim yes thank you for clarifying that for me so, yeah, and then I think it's 1983 time the filmation He-Man came out. So you're looking at about four years there. And that, that's not a huge window, but it's obviously was enough window there for something that was good versus a huge success, which this catapult He-Man, this crazy. And I mean, it's a funny thing. Really, Flash Gordon should have had that since he had a pre-following, you know, many years ago. So maybe it was just too outdated at that point. So, so exactly. Yeah. 1982. So, so guys, uh, uh, Tim, what, if you've got a comment, what's your comment on the new Ghostbuster? One thing I do want to say, I seen where they're coming out with a new six inch scale Ghostbuster food. Now I am going to tell you the toy smuggler will be grabbing those. That, it looks amazing. The Ecto one looks great. And I honestly too, the new, uh, movie versions like this that they're kind of animated look but they're made off the movie version those look great and those i'm probably going to be getting for my daughter when she i ain't gonna guys when she came in and i showed my daughter those ghostbusters man she flipped and something else she flipped over and i'm looking at buying this for her we was at walmart and she seen the playmobil versions of the ghostbusters stuff and then the figures i think look like crap but the x the ecto one looks amazing uh, and the firehouse on the Playmobil looks better than the original firehouse. So I may have to buy it on that one. I mean, it looks that great. So let's see what Tim's saying here. Yes. Yeah. From 79 to 82. So yeah, no more. And it was ending. That's when the, the He-Man popped up, which back then those uh, companies, I'd honestly, 
making a cartoon is extremely difficult. It takes so many artists to pull it off. I can see them not be pick and choose a new hot item versus the item which these figures just like I said, they just didn't fly off the shelf. But I remember, like I said, when my grandmother, I was looking, she took me, she goes, you can buy any Star Wars figure you want. And I and I couldn't find the one. I think I was looking for a Bespin Luke at the time. I can't remember which one I was looking for. It might not, it might have been uh, still something from the new line. But anyway, I couldn't find the one I want. So I thought, well, I'll get me a Stormtrooper. Couldn't find a Stormtrooper. And my grandmother, about a few feet away, she goes, Wow, I hadn't seen those in a long time. I was like, what are you talking about? She said, Flash Gordon. I used to watch that on TV. And I was like, well, who's Flash Gordon? She showed me the figures. And, man, the, the card art was amazing. The figures looked great. And uh, real, like I said, so anyway, she I bought, like, she got me all three or four of them that was there that day. I think it was the, these three I got here was the three that she got me. And I, but, I, but I think I had the Liz one and the thong. It's like four or five figures she's got. And then and she took me home. And I think on TBS, they were showing that night late. She let me stay up like 11 o'clock. And they were showing the, the, the black and white cereal. Fell in love with it. And I, I could still sit down and watch every one of those black and whites right now and be thoroughly entertained. Great storytelling. They, they look like the classic Kenner figures. Yes, they do. Yeah, they didn't. Star Trek, the plan. Yeah, I love to see a, a new star. The Funko came out with some of those Planet Apes, and I just, like I said, not nothing gets Super 7, but I just think those Funko figures, the quality of them, when you go to bend the arms and the legs, that those little joints in there are, are, are they ripped. I don't know what kind of plastic that is, but it sure as heck ain't this kind of plastic. It's like half the strength, and it's fine if you, I guess, if you just want to take them out of package and stand them up on your shelf, that'd be great. But definitely not for a little kid to be playing with them for sure. Yes, Migo did. And I, oh God, I would love to have a, here, I will tell you this, Tim. I, I Finding a Flash Gordon Migo A would be totally unaffordable. But I, since I am making Migo figures now, I'm actually looking at making my own custom Flash Gordon based off this style of artwork from the the that one or i might be able to do a, a hodgepodge of this versus roughly what he looked like in the old serials so that's a new thing i'm actually i'm glad you mentioned that tim because one of the new things that i am doing right now with the santiago cerillo I'm, he's got two different migo style figures uh i actually got my own migo figure coming out uh probably in another month from uh, Paranormal Chasers, the movies that I did four Paranormal Chaser movies. And my character was a uh, Jonathan Crosley. We're looking at coming out with that figure and Santiago was starred in the last two of my Paranormal Chasers called, he played an ancient vampire called Dread Drake. So we're looking at coming out with both of those figures. Let's see, uh, do a custom Frank Frazetta fantasy figures. That, hey, speaking of that, Tim, I did have a great idea on member Frank Frazetta's fire and ice cartoon uh what cool idea it would be would take some of those characters and make Mego figures out of the fire and ice cartoon just the beautiful artwork and it a it showcases the artwork of frank frazetta that's actually something i thought about talking about frank jr and uh because talking about him and see if we something we can't work together on something like that i think that would be amazing it is still one of the uh, fire and ice if you people if you've never watched fire and ice i'm telling you 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 got to because it is probably still holds up today as the best quality cartoon ever drawn put out story whatever it is it's top quality all the way oh yeah frank jr is doing great he uh he's up there he still runs the actual museum uh my wife actually just talked to him i think the other uh two years ago uh, I, she bought me some prints for Christmas and she called him up and they worked together for like a, a couple weeks. And, uh, and I don't know if you can see it up here on the wall. I want, I, I found, I got a new, uh, I made a mount for my camera. I'm going to turn it up here, up here on the wall. You see, see, those are three for Zetas right there. The one in the middle, that's a deaf dealer. I got that from Sarah for Zeta down in Atlanta. Uh, when we was all at Dragon Con together. And the two on the outer edges is my wife uh, got Frank Jr. They come from the actual uh, museum up there. And, and Frank uh, Jr. actually signed both of them on the back. 
And she surprised me, I think it was like two years ago at Christmas with both of those. And I ain't, I'm not going to lie, guys. When I opened those up and seen that they were Frazettas, I cried. Yep, the toy smuggler cried. It broke down. That was probably the most heartfelt Christmas gift I've ever gotten in my whole entire life. So it, it was it was amazing. That was an amazing Christmas morning, so to speak. So, no, Frank Jr. is doing great. And uh, like I said, I actually talked to him last year. Where we've been talking back and forth now for a little over a year on if there's any kind of products uh, through his father's property that I can get and put on, you know, either make statues off of. So, yeah, I've been the toy smugglers been talking to them about trying to do for Zeta statues and stuff like that. So it's but Frank's, of course, you know, Frank's got to be very reserved and picky who he uses. And I don't blame him because we don't you don't want just anybody handling a legacy such as that and, and that's something I, i'm i'm just having to just gonna have to do my diligence keep in touch with him keep showing him the work that i'm doing for like smith lords and then uh, stand solo and just keep showing him what kind of quality i'm doing and hopefully one day he'll say all right you know he'll turn me loose on something and man what a great uh honor it would be to be able to the do representations of Frazetta's work. So it would it would be a, it would be an honor to be, to get that chance to do that. Let's see here. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Well, Frank's uh, unfortunate passed away. His wife passed away shortly before he did. So, but all the uh, daughters and granddaughters and son is all alive. Yeah, they're all doing great. Uh, Sarah, she is going on the road taking the taking her part of the collection on the road. Like I said, Frank Jr., he stays at the museum. He He's the curator of the museum now and has been for quite a while. So he, I think the collection got split up like four different ways. And uh, so they all got their splits and they're all doing their own little thing. So that's the only unfortunate thing about that. So, got, so you also got wizards. Uh, oh, yeah, yes. Yes, I remember that as well. And everything so but no yeah the, the the retro stuff is definitely is a big playing card i see going into 2020 and i really see it kind of going on a a few more years because we still got some properties that's not been redone yet i think with uh such shows like stranger things has really uh kind of activated this and kind of make it a little bit it, they was one of the first ones that kind of played off that and it worked but give uh, stranger things due credit they took a retro style thing uh property made it their own but they made sure they stayed with the retro rules hence good product and and like i said now i think that's the key if you're going to do it let's do it right and i think i hope hasbro continues uh like i said coming out with these kind of figures i think that's fine but i think those guys i i, I hope you guys will just get rid of this and I, I get this, but instead of putting a sticker, because guess what, guys? They can we can all remove that. Easy peasy. Waste of time. Just go ahead and print it and put it right here in the corner. Print it on it. That way no one can take it off. There, you can't hide it. You whatever. That way everybody's happy. You got something. Because even though as nice as this kind of looks, that runs it. This it kind of hurts the display value. So I've just been too lazy to take mine off. I've, working my butt off right now so that's why i get on here and live stream at 4 a.m sometimes so but guys that's i got to get ready to go to work here in a few minutes but please uh if you get to watch this later definitely uh check it out give me your opinions on what you think of what's going on with uh, all these new retro products do you like it do you not what's the pros and cons tell me what you think about the flash gordon stuff i know a lot of people don't care about that the toy smuggler i really love it oh before I forget, I'm hoping to have a video for you guys Saturday afternoon sometime or Saturday evening. Uh, and I almost forgot to talk about this. I got another Holy Grail unboxing. I got it all set up to meet this guy at 10 o'clock Saturday morning. And this is, I know, this has been a Holy Grail year for me already. And out of the top 10, this is going to be my third Holy Grail. And, uh... The last one I got was the Death Star playset. That was uh, the last Holy Grail I got. And uh, that was in my, 
there's I had two number ones, and let me quickly explain. The one number one, which was the Death Star, was something I had it as a kid. I played the heck out of it till it was just falling apart. And one day, my mom, when I was going to school, she threw it away. So it took me years to get another one. I know it probably took me longer than what it should have. I just didn't want to pay the high prices people throw on stuff. But but anyway, I got. I knew I could always get one, even if I had to buy it in parts. Now, my other number no, number one Holy Grail was something that I had. I'm not going to run it for anybody, but it was something I didn't have. I remember sitting on the steps in the living room, looking at through the Sears catalog and saying, I want this, circled it real big, and I never got it. And I've been trying to get it ever since. And about 10, 11 years ago, I started seeing it at conventions, and it was like $300 then, and now it's jumped up to six and seven, almost $800 now, and I've only seen a couple on the internet, and boom, this deal came up. Luckily, I know I know the guy, so I, I've known him for like 10 years, and I totally forgot that he had one, because like I said, I gave up thinking I was going to ever get this, so so. Is this is huge, guys? I mean, it's it's a very rare toy. It's not one that I even hear people talk about much. So I can't wait to share that moment with you guys. So I'm gonna try to go live from my cell phone. If not, we'll record it and I'll put it up later that night. So please stay tuned. Kind of check out the Toy Smuggler channel throughout the Saturday because I think me and my wife we got to go furniture shopping right after that up in Chattanooga. So please. This sometime later that evening or around 10 o'clock, look on YouTube and see if you can't catch me live. So check that out, folks. Uh, and Tim, thank you this morning for all your awesome comments and questions this morning. Good to see you. And guys, hope you all have a great, safe weekend. It's Friday. People drive crazy. So be safe out there. I'm the Toy Smuggler. Catch you later.